Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for the brand new video and I nearly lost the old breath there but at least Sir had made me breathless today because it certainly wasn't the fit but no it's actually the fault of having to sit here and break this down for his because by god was it rough to actually watch as we had to talk about Rangers 1 Hearts now that was probably the exact opposite of a festival of football, a joy on the eye. He says, I'm honestly sitting here in front of you once again, learning sun for this season. Because we were told we'll learn more about the team October, November. We'll see the best of the team October, November. Well, do you know what I've learned by November is the importance that the international break is now to my sanity. Because by God, do we need a break for watching this team? Because... It's absolutely torture. <laughs> and look, I know right away there's going to be people jumping and saying, oh, here he goes, he's going to be nagging. We won this game. Can we not just take the win, enjoy the win, and move on for there? Absolutely. And if you feel like you want to do that, go ahead and do it. And I understand the hell I've been that guy. And I've accepted these ugly wins. And the office, three points up the road. <laughs> By God, G luck. That was lucky and everything like that. We've been that many, many times over the years. And of course, there are games like that in the season. But there does become a time ladies and gentlemen that the ugly wins and the three points up the road stops being ugly wins and we off days and everything like that just starts becoming the norm and that for me is where we as a football club have slowly but surely regressed into that this is the type of standard that we're now seeing on a regular basis it isn't after a tough week it isn't a one-off anymore it's what we see time and time and time again as I sit in front of you as a Rangers fan in November we were supposed to be at our best having played 11 league matches you know what I mean in the competition throwing away Europe throwing away Cup Fib I'm talking about the competition we sing so many songs about because it used to be a standard to go ahead and win this trophy I'm talking about league football we've played 11 matches we've scored just 16 goals with six of them being in the same game versus Ross County leaving just 10 goals in 10 games with only two of them coming in five away of performances that is the standards that we are slowly but surely being fed doing our throat and we have to sit and cheer and be happy and continue to pretend that we're no going anywhere but backwards right now for me ladies and gentlemen this isn't an ugly win three points up the road this is a win that papers over some clear cracks that for me unfortunately isn't it going to get filled anytime soon napon intended and look maybe I am wrong here maybe my feelings and my frustrations that's built up after watching another game fed down my throat that way it is completely off base and I'm completely out of it you can let me know down in the comment section below but for me as a Rangers fan watching a Rangers team go into an international break in November having scored less goals than St Mirren Dundee and newly promoted Dundee United for me is just saying I'm not willing to accept and happy clap if I'm honest because it's just clear regression week in and week out and from Thursday where I thought you know what there it's finally dropped it should have happened months ago it should have happened it's been clear for a very long time but I thought on Thursday after he finally made the big call and I gave him so much praise and I was so excited and I've carried that excitement for the last four days from that game because he bombed out Tavernier he put in a younger laddie in there and Sterling went out there and was man of the match in that role putting in not only his best performance of the season but the best performance we've seen it right back for a very long time at this club since Tavernier used to put this club on his back and I'll give him all the credit in the world and what I say here and what I talk about here is the an anti-Tavernier thing I used to get called a Tavernier fanboy for as long as I can actually remember but again at the same time as where I've defended him and where I've really admired what he's done truly I think he does deserve to be in the Hall of Fame controversial I know what he's done for this claim the armband the weight he's had to carry year upon year after year with the bad teams the bad players the bad signings and the bad managers the way he's went about his business he gets all the respect for me whenever he does leave I'll give him a thumbs up for there and I'll wish him all the best when he does go but he's getting played when he shouldn't be getting played anymore and I thought that penny was dropped in first because we saw a response we saw a team hungry and it was a really good performance that not only saw again the best from the right back spot but it also saw an improvement in other areas of the park the likes of right wing with Cherney I thought he was great on Thursday now he never got two goals never grabbed the headlines but that but if you actually watch the game he was 
is freed up eh, the weight of needing to bomb backwards and defend and cover for Tavernier when he's out of position. He was freed up at all that defensive responsibility because our winger was allowed to be a winger. Why? Because our right back was not towing a caravan and was defending himself. He didn't need any help. He was freed up eh, the shackles. And I go and then look in this game four days later and I just see the shape completely all out of balance I'm having to watch Cherney come back and defend I'm having to watch him slow down to facilitate a slowly regression with a full back running beyond him I'm needing to see midfielders getting away from the press that work so well on Thursday because one of them's got to keep an eye on if there's a massive gap actually behind him I'm seeing Raskin needing to run down there I'm seeing Barron needing to run down there I'm seeing the shape that looked strong and promising four days ago be ripped up for what? Ah, ah, I got you. There you are, Tavernier, go. The assist, and I know for a fact there won't be people watching to this part before they've jumped in the comment section like, <laughs> Tavernier, got an assist. I bet you feel pretty silly, and for those people, I can only assume you didn't watch the game of football. Like, truly, I can only assume that because it just devolved and just made us look absolutely rotten because everybody was out of position. It was so slow to get going, and it was just such a sharp decline for the appetite and the work that we saw four days ago to what we saw the day. And look, some of that will be, of course, the European football and everything like that but for me it's more than that and it's just the responsibility when he's on the park and when he's off the park and the benefit of when he's on and off it's clear as day now and we've got three major examples of that the semi-final versus Mullerwell before and after he came on Thursday night's performance where an actual right back in there the difference there and again the day the before and the old after. It's clear to everybody apart from the guy that's unfortunately making the choice and going back to the fact that he has got an assist and they are. I got you as Sam we've talked about for weeks now. It's eventual. This today was always going to happen when Tavernier got the assist and Dessers was always going to get the goal. The winner. That's the boys that's been criticised. That's the boys you want bombed at the team. That was always going to go happen because they continually get played over and over again for this exact moment and this exact game, this is what it's been played for, that's why they've been played through, oh, to have this, ah, I got your moment, now people's got it, do they feel great about it, does an assist and a goal versus second bottom hearts at Ibrox in a game we struggled to get over the line and perform it, make up for the months and months of poor play and drop points, if it does, fair enough, but for me, at Disney, because being a Rangers player and playing for Rangers used to mean you earned your jersey and you had to fight your ass for it. No be handed it time and time and time again till eventually you rewarded the man back with a moment to win a game of football. That's not the standards I'm willing to accept, if I'm honest with you. You know what I mean? That used to be week in, week out, week in, week out. No, once every blue moon or once every 11 games in the SP. FL. And I have absolutely no idea if my frustration is overboiled here, but I was so bitterly disappointed by what we'd done the day, the setup, and actually just watching the game slowly revert into what it was after a bright 15 minutes. And I'll give them that. We looked good for 15 minutes. Then we scored early on in the game, and then we just sat and allowed Hearts to come to Ibrox and just pass the ball, have pressure, allow Shanklin to drop into the 10 position and just look like Jude Bellingham just pulling out passes, making runs and everything like that boy looks like he's at Lauren Shanklin for last year, yet he's galloping away for our players and creating space and I'm sitting saying, really? That's what we are now. We take the lead in the games, then we sit off teams and let them come to our house and play about at Ibrox, and it's not the first time it's happened. It's happened recently at Ibrox several times, one of them obviously being Hibs, which is probably the perfect example to use because not only the Edinburgh rivals, but their last and second last in the league, and they've came to our house and arguably created major opportunities and pinned us in for large parts of the game. And again, that's what we're getting told to accept. That's the project. The project is nonsense. It's, it's, it's a fugazi, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't a young team. This isn't a, it's the same team. Minus one or two players occasionally actually going to retain. It's the exact same stuff again. 
if it was Stalin, if it was Nana, if it was Danilo, if it was Zygaman, if it was Haji, if it was all these other boys here that had been outside looking in, getting in and playing, we could understand it because you're trying to lay foundations that's gone in to the football club. But to anybody that's still watching right now, how is forcing a 33-year-old fullback and a guy that's turning 30 very, very shortly who's not going to get any better in starting a living's helping the future of this club? Surely that's more short-sighted. That's no laying foundations down. That's just kicking the can down the road air and air again. And that's who I feel going in to this international break. Again, I'm really, really sorry if you think this is coming off negative and maybe a day need to sleep in it. But I was so disappointed and I just see the standard slip away and we have to happy clap and accept what slop getting fired their way. Why? The prices aren't getting cheaper and nothing's cheaper to go to the games. The prices are gone up. The tops are gone up. There's another one out this week that we've all ordered and spent 80 odd quid on again. So the prices are gone up. The prices are gone up. They're wanting more money here, there and everywhere. Yet the product's getting significantly worse and we have to be happy about that and accept nonsense when we're supposed to be building projects. Nothing's getting built. It's the same stuff. It's just bells and whistles and flashy things fired our way and for me I just don't buy it anymore and I'm sorry if you feel like I'm being negative but I just don't buy what they're selling anymore and that for me is how I feel going in to this international break and that win and that 1-0 win over second bottom of the league hearts but getting into the game recap because I probably annoyed everyone and let everyone down with my old negativity but getting into the game recap the changes were explained the likes of Leon Balogun I'm completely fine with coming in occasionally with the rotation that we're needing today right and plus I actually think Leon Balogun is our best defender. It's got none of the day with his age, and he's just our best centre half. So I'm fine. We are best centre back player. And if Davney was our best right back at 33, I'd be fine with that as well. If we were finding other ways to get these young laddies that were signing, giving contract extensions, and paying a hell of a lot of money to sit on the bench and watch all the time, you know what I mean? So I'm fine with Leon Balogun. But the right back one goes back to the son I was talking about. Was getting fed nonsense and told nonsense. We were told the rotations that were done was based on fitness and minutes and keeping people fresh right Nana is 22 years old he's played just 11 games this season to a total of 517 minutes prior to this game Dujon Stellan is 25 years old in which he's been a part of 16 matches to a total of 577 minutes the man that those two players were picked over to keep things fresh and keep the rotation was Tavernier who is 33 years old and has been a part of 19 matches in all t competitions this season to 1,507 minutes prior to today's game so even that I'm sitting like being like well that's just made up that doesn't make any sense because you could add Nana and Sterling's time on the park and minutes played together and they're still less than the right back that's coming in to keep things fresh over the boys that aren't they playing and I guess that's where I'm getting annoyed at now because I'm hearing stuff and I'm going well that's not true that's that's made up that's nonsense and I think that's where I'm stumbling and that's where I'm struggling but again that's what we're getting told it's the sports science world maybe Sterling can he play 60 minutes say a game of football you know what I mean well good giving him a contract extension you know what I mean a player that can he play more than 51 minutes brilliant I'm glad we gave him a contract extension great signing Nana not to play him you know what I mean Awesome. Just mere wages getting fired out there. For what? But that was the changes and everything else remained the same. We were expecting the likes of Dessers to play. And again, I'm fine with that because I know where we are in terms of the old season. But I would just like to see Danilo get built up to more minutes. And again, I'd still like to see our young lad, Igeman, get the opportunity to learn. Because Igeman's the age that we're getting told. And Igeman would actually fit the profile we're getting fed in press conferences and fed in statements. He's a young laddie that would be a part of their project, that would be the benefit of this club, that would add value rather than bringing players in, force feeding them into a starting 11, usually out of position and devaluing their ability and devalu devaluing their worth gone actual forward but again throwing my frustration to one side shake it off let's get in to the game because believe it or not it was actually promising to begin with again we created a couple opportunities despite gifting an early corner away as Lauren Shanklin turned away played a beautiful ball down the channel one a corner we defended that really really well big soapy gets up headers the ball away and it was us then that started to really take charge of this match and actually looked 
good. And after winning a couple early corners and putting in that early pressure, usually doing the left hand side with Barami and Jeff Day earning some fright, bright, bright things, it then goes to Butlin who plays it into Raskin who turns his seed on a swivel, plays in Jeff Day who uses that pace down the left hand side, he then finds Barami who hits an absolute wonderful low driven cross right into a dangerous area, it falls to Tavernier, it's looking like the great seasons under Tavernier, he strikes it, he kindly shanks it but I do think it's gone in anyway and ends up hitting off Dessa so he puts his foot out, which I'm fine with, legitimately, because that's where I want my striker to be, on his tays, getting on the end of everything, that's an ugly goal Dessa, I wish you could score a hell of a lot of them, I'm fine with that, I've seen some people say, oh he's stealing Tav's goal, come on now this is professional football, our striker's got to be there, tap into the back of it and you're seeing a Tavernier assist, Dessa's goal, and I know what was going to come my way, you know what I mean, <laughs> fine. You know what I mean? They're playing every week. They're eventually going to score, especially with the wages they get actually played versus what else is available in Scottish football. You know what I mean? Just keep rolling the dice. I'll eventually come up double six if you actually catch my drift. So, aye, they ended up coming up there. They get the early goal. And again, I'm fine with it. It's never anything personal. Have I got frustrations in what we're doing and why I feel like there's clear halts and clear regression in what we're trying to do as a football club? Absolutely. But as soon as they cross that white line, I don't care. Who scores, ladies and gentlemen? I'm bouncing about, I'm celebrating, I'm having fun with my pals, I'm excited to see Rangers score. We're on it and I'm like, yes, come on now. And I, mean, I even thought to myself, the silly romantic that I am and the, the constant optimist, believe it or not, despite the intro in the last couple of minutes, I thought, can you imagine if that just sparks to have in life? That's how silly I am. Did it? No, because the next time he touched they end up kicking the old boy. But as we were building and looking good and building and doing promising, hearts were sort of their own downfall as they tried to play a blind back pass that Dessers wins on. He runs through, he hits a fake shot, the defender doesn't actually fall for it. Ends up having a shot that ends up rebounding back to him and he tries a cheeky wee chip that goes just wide. Again though, it was promising, it was playing attacking football, it was going forward, it wasn't it slowing the ball down, wasn't it getting flung about like an empty pair of jammies. It was something to get behind and that is what, fa what we as fans want to see a team playing forward attacking football whose first instinct is to go forward rather than hold on to it and slow it down defend and slow it down and defend we actually saw some attacking play and it was very very promising but again as I said it was about 15 minutes a good football versus second bottom of hearts at Ibrox despite taking an early lead you could argue they, they, they read the storm if you will, but then they started to come into it. Tavernier's out of position here as he tries to do a 1-2 with Cherney. Cherney then tries to sprint back and gets, I think it's Forrest on the left-hand side. No, I think it's Vargas, actually. Vargas, who runs away again. Cherney's miles out. He's, he's, he's supposed to be the winger. He's not supposed to be the right-back, so I'm not wanting to hear that he never closed his man down. He's having to make a 60-yard sprint because Tavernier will only do it. But anyway, the ball comes into the mix, but it's actually very well defended by big soapy suitor. And I wanted to mention that because I know if I never mentioned the good bit of defending and I mentioned the major mistake he heard it, people would say I'd been too critical on Big Soapy, that was great there, again, he's doing something he's having to do a lot of, and what Goldson had to do a lot of, bail out the right hand side, good defending, he's next, wasn't he? But before we get there, we did show a couple of wee signs, Cherny gets on the ball, ends up getting a wee bit of lucky with a cheeky little nutmeg, but within a mind actually seeing it, he ends up on a shot for Ranger, which is easily saved for the goalie, he then had more pl good play coming down the left hand side, Jeff and Barami, Jeff and Barami into corner bar and Raskin, it's, it's bouncing about, eventually gets cut back to Barami outside the box and his shot is deflected just wide, and I get, ah, alright, and again, right, we're starting to strangle a little bit more for it, but that was just a false dawn, that 60 seconds was false, as we started playing into the heart hands again with that sitting off mentality that nervous slow everything doing does somebody else want to take responsibility does somebody else want to take responsibility mentality and again that just fed into hearts and the way we nearly fed it to hearts was frightening as Soapy who I gave a lot of praise to earlier on in the video tries his own version of a back pass it's completely under hit and thankfully Vargas has more interest in diving than playing football and I've said this before about this lad right and I said it on opening day and I said it last season as well this guy is all pace and all movement but he just doesn't seem to actually want to stay on his feet because for me it's a great slide challenge for Butlin as the back pass is short Butlin needs to come out it's a brilliant slide challenge but see if I'm looking at it for the other way as a Rangers fan if that was one of my players run if that was a Cherney if that was a Barami or something, I'm screaming at why he's not took that round the goalie instead of he's just kind of kicked it with the outside he's fit and then just absolutely swan dived that's all he's interested in is kicking the ball away for Butlin so he can flop like a fish and try to win a 
penalty rather than having the killer instinct. And I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he'd done the exact same thing at Tynecastle at the start of this season when the goal scoreline was obviously 0-0. As well, the lad's just too interested in diving rather than playing football. And by God, am I thankful for it. And aye, Jack Butlin. Thank you, as you say, Big Soapy's blushies on that one. And that's it for the first half. There was nothing else in that entire first half. No, no, nothing. No, even a corner whipped into a dangerous area. No, a heater one anywhere. No, a shot for range. No, a shot blocked or nothing. For around about the 30th minute to 45, there was not a single thing to talk about apart from, my God, it's so slow. It's so safe. And it's so damn negative. Where's the killer instinct? Where's empty in the tank? It's the international break now. And people say, ah, well, just had a tough week in European football. Aye, we just had a tough week. That's why you rotate. That's why we've got 400 people on the wage bill getting paid a hell of a lot of money to actually play for this club. That's when you start to rotate and bring them in. You didn't bring in players that are older that's played more minutes than everybody else. You maybe rotate other areas in. And I was just disappointed with maybe the attitude and the work rate and just that drive because it just wasn't instilled anywhere and we come out in the second half no changes were made or anything like that and I was thinking right come on 45 minutes Clement's been in there he's probably gave a wee bit of jersey tell people to empty it there's 45 minutes left you're about to have two weeks off let's see what he's actually have got and it was actually Hearts that burst through the middle as Lauren Shanklin again pirouettes away from the midfield and plays in a gorgeous through ball to Vargas again who is 1v1 versus Jack Butlin and I think he just hesitates as again I think he, he bricks his knickknacks if I'm being honest with you and that gives but not only the chance to put him under mere pressure, but it does put him a little bit more white and thankfully hits his post when he's 1v1 versus the goalie because nobody was catching him and that was your big fire response to the second half to allow Shanklin to play right through us, sorry, and go through, play Vargas in, who hit the post. It's rotten. Now again, now again, I would love to say that sparked us into life and that gave us something and we maybe tried this and we were maybe unlucky here or maybe Dessers was offside. There, there was nothing. There's nothing to note from the 45th minute. In fact, there's nothing to note for the 30th minute of this game to the 68th minute. And you know what's in the 68th minute in terms of a Rangers perspective? Obviously, Hearts hit the post in the second, early in the second half. But the only thing we're talking about here is a substitution in the 68th minute. And that was Tavernier coming off. That was Nana coming on. And that was also Connor Barron getting substituted off for Sterling, who again just put in the best performance a right back has played for Rangers this season. He's no getting to play there. He's in at centre mid. And when I tell you that crowd turned negative, the second we saw Connor Barron get substituted off that park, who again was playing brilliantly with wee Raskin and Merrill. Again, for all my frustrations, I like that midfield partnership and again Raskin won the official man of the match I think today and everything like that and fair enough if you see that but Connor Barron for me was the one I thought he was excellent some of the stuff that he played through with Cheney like when he got in the ball and he played it down to the right and Cheney has a shot with his right foot in the next um, and just a minute before he came off again it wasn't a big moment or a big save or anything like that but again it's all coming down for Connor Barron winning the ball and playing it Cheney just takes it too wide that's not really a major opportunity I thought Bar Barron was great and clearly so did the rest of the crowd as you could see sense the frustration you could sense the negativity and you know what i think that is now that is the fans sicky seen players who are playing well be removed for games or are playing well and no getting played and it's never the players that are playing badly that's coming off now people will say it's actually sports science he's run certain amount of kilometers this month he's got to come off and that's fair enough again if you want to go do that. But we didn't see the stats and statistics. We saw someone playing well get substituted off for a right back whilst we're watching Hearts at Ibrox make two attacking substitutions. But we sit there and bring on two right backs, 1-0 up, struggling versus the second worst team in the league this season. That is what we see as fans. And again, it's just that regression. Hearts are putting the front foot. Hearts are thinking more forward thinking. Hearts are bringing in more attackers. Well, we are seemingly parking the old bus and again rewarding Sterling for playing man of the match level at right back four days ago to chucking him back in the middle where again he was sort of an afterthought in the game apart from one thankful brilliant clearance he does uh, late on the game it's actually 87th minute spoiler alert for the rest of it just speaking about Sterling now thank god he's there because it's 1-1 in the 87th minute and it's absolute curtains and it's probably the end of Clement's managerial career at Rangers if I'm being honest but again we're not quite at the 87th minute yet because the substitution was made the fans weren't happy it was grumbling it was ugly it was stinking 
And that's sort of what the game was. We have to jump all the way to 10 minutes into the old future where we're going to talk about Barami getting on the ball in the central area. Plays a gorgeous blow to Cherny who runs down to the right. Again, he's freed up now as there's a right back actually defending. He's able to play as a winger. He just gets his striker into the middle and Barami has a shot that's well saved by Craig Gordon. And it was interesting looking at that because Barami had just drifted into the central area by himself as Diamandi was away at centre mid. And you got to see what Barami could do in the middle of the park. <laughs> it's funny because he'd done that, right? He got a shot on target. He got the arses off C he got a big excitement and then you see he's getting tilted to go back out to the left and has to trot away for his natural position and play at the left and we're playing a number 10 at winger and we're playing a right back at centre mid no wonder it's as uncomfortable to watch as it actually is but aye there's nothing else to really talk about over the next 10 minutes as we need to jump again to talk about a substitution as the likes of Cherney and Barami comes off the part for Kieran Dowell and Ross McCausland, that's right, still no place on the part for number 10, Hadji, on this occasion, who I was a bit silly, naive in his last game, but you know what he also done in his last game for Rangers? Have an assist, which not a lot of people does in a Rangers team. Again, this is a team that struggles to create and a team that struggles to score goals. 10 and 10 when you take away the six versus Ross County. You look at the rest of it, that's the standards that are being set. And aye, it has to be said that it's hearts that started to pile on the negative. Long ball after long ball. I don't think Dessers touched the ball since about the 38th minute, if I'm honest. Like, honestly, long ball after long ball. Long, Danilo ends up coming out the park. It's still long ball after long ball. And then the 87th minute happens where it's a long throw. I think it actually hits Balogun on the shoulder, but it drops. Kent looks like he's going to tap it into the back of it, but thankfully, Dujon Sterling's there to react. It gets it clean. You're like, by God, we get away with that. And then, to be fair, as Hearts has just thrown everything but the kitchen sink up top. We start to hit on the counter attack where Casawiro ends up hitting the crossbar with a gorgeous volley as Danilo runs wide after Kieran Dill does a nice wee turn away. Plays into Danilo. Danilo then plays it in to the middle. Casawiro hits it on the old volley on Nana, of course, and Nana hits the bar right there. And can, right, we can't even wrap the game up. And then a weird moment happened at the end of the game where there's a set piece and there's actually a corner for Hearts. They whip it in. It looks like it hits somebody's hand feet outside the box. It's no in the side but it hits it and I'm thinking oh well it's going to be a free kick oh my god this is set up for Lauren Shanklin to strike us in the U no what skin and the referee sort of like going like this and talk to these linesmen and they just end the game early and I'm thinking well that was lucky now I don't know if there was an offside in the builder I don't know what the official ruling is again I get there I watch the game I come here I film I didn't even watch press conferences because I wanted it to be my opinion I don't know what the official reason was or anything like, but it felt like the referee just blew the game early because the game was an absolute dead rubber if I'm honest I'm not saying the game was bad but in the 93rd minute 30 seconds before that went in Jack Butlin played a 1-2 between him and Gordon it was just long ball after long ball after long ball and that was it, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't just want a win today. I wanted something in our performance. I wanted to build on from Thursday. I wanted to build on the positivity. Claymore had got some praise. Claymore had got the fans back on side for making a big call. But then he just takes all our goodwill, goes to that and shows that maybe, just maybe, there will only be many bright days by the end of this season. And it's going to be a very, very long, painful one. Because, I it's three points. But at the same time as when does it stop being three points? up the road when does it start becoming by god I see what we're building we're just kicking the can down the road that's what it feels like unfortunately to me it's a really tough watch and again for someone who hates international break as much as me as I love talking about everything there is to talk about Rangers thank god it's international break because we all need a wee bit of a break for watching the standard and uh, what we're seeing so we can start building up the expectations and hope again by the time we come back we once again raise our levels and get back to looking like a Rangers side that we all want to see as fans and we're being starved of right now because it's so lifeless you know what I mean and I think about the players I look at the way the game ended I look at the way they're actually playing and I wouldn't be surprised right I know I've went here this many many times but the changes that's getting made Tavernier coming back in blah 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 getting in coming in coming in coming in boys that are coming in and getting the man of the match that'll spread and you're naive to think that Disney spread to a, a, a dressing room a locker room whatever you want to call it wherever you are and you know that spreads to everybody because they'll see Sterling come in they play man of the match bombed out the next game mate, and they're just like Ah, well, and I think that's why we're seeing so many sleepwalking performance because half the team knows that no matter what they do, 
when they st when they get an occasional start, when they day come on from the bench, it doesn't matter how well they day, they will not break into the starting eleven because they are not one of Claymont's favourites. And two, the other half know that no matter how badly they play, they're going to get to play next week as well. And that's just the recipe that I'm actually seeing. And that's why I'm seeing seeing so many of these laboured, lifeless performances. We're rewarding it. We are the ones that's creating it by allowing this to actually fester and punishing guys. Casuero when he was man in match versus Mamo, never saw him again in terms of the starting eleven. Sterling just three day, four days ago, sorry, bombed out again. It's the same stuff air and air again, and we're never learning nothing. What was the day? What was the point of the day? Ah, I, I gotcha. You were wrong about Tavernier. You were wrong about Dessers. Is that what we've devolved into? It's not about winning trophies anymore, winning games. It's that. Is that what we are? I don't like it, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to see this Rangers team get back to playing football the way that they should be playing and just give us sun so we can all get a sign. I need to see sun be planted in and built upon. Rather, look, we're going to build on this. <laughs> Rip away. Build away. Air again. But again, I've probably said this too many times. I think I may be way, way off here. Maybe I'm just too close to it. Please let me know down in the comment section. Well, if I'm completely wrong, you can let me know. But I, I just didn't see the project. I didn't see what we're building. I'm just seeing nonsense fired my way left, right and centre. For me, it's just no good enough to watch a Rangers team be outscored by the likes of St Mirren, Dundee and a newly promoted side for the Championship. You know what I mean? We're nearly at the January transfer window right now and we're getting outscored versus some of these teams. Like, come on now. You know what I mean? I'm not being disrespectful to them, but come on. And that's me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's my thoughts and opinions. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong. But until next time, as always, I'll tell you how I feel either way. I certainly won't be sitting on the fence right here on the channel. Until next time, I've been CJ Ronnie too. Enjoy your international break. If I don't see you for two weeks, enjoy it. I'll see you when we all come back and talk about the old football once again. Until then, thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.